I'll be talking about how you create and drive business value leveraging a global IT service provider. Uh, before I begin, let me tell you a little bit about Pearson. Is there feedback? Okay. A little bit about Pearson. Pearson strives to be the global leader in learning. We're made up of three operating companies, Pearson Education, which is the global leader in educational services, educational technology, and school solutions. The next group is the Penguin Group, our trade publishing group, and they are the world's most renowned English language publisher. And the third group is the Financial Times, made up of the Financial Times newspaper and the FT.com. From the standpoint of context to our outsourcing uh, environment, uh, Pearson outsources well over $250 million of technology services. This includes applications development, infrastructure, technology help desk, BPO-related functions, et cetera. And our outsourcing partners support both operational development needs as well as technology product development. We are an ISV, and we do this on a global basis. The technology sourcing group, which is the group that I run and reports into the CIO organization, has been in existence for roughly five years. I'm going to make a few assumptions uh, before beginning this presentation. One is that your company is already outsourcing or offshoring in some way, shape, or form. Not a stretch since this is an HCL global meet. You've realized some cost savings, and a lot of that's been through a rate arbitrage. And now you seek something else. You're looking to get greater value from your sourcing vendor. You're looking to perhaps get over some disillusionment that's taken place. Maybe the euphoria has worn off a little bit. You're realizing that it's, there's some unforeseen costs associated with outsourcing. Um, there's more challenges associated with the governance and vendor relationship management. You're working in a very dynamic technology environment and, and you're looking for thought leadership and perhaps you're saying, wow, am I getting this? Am I getting the full value from the relationship? And uh, many of you are probably familiar with the Gartner hype curve where it talks about the steep rise in hype that's experienced with something new that's followed by an equally steep decline in the hype and oftentimes is followed by a gradual and steady increase in hype associated with something new that's being introduced. And I'm going to apply this hype curve um, philosophy to the journey that many of us have gone through related to outsourcing. So we've seen the hype rise. We've seen that. We've felt good about things that have happened with uh, cost savings and whatnot. And we've experienced value. I'd like to introduce the value aspect of things as well. It's got to be more than just looking at hype. So what's happened along this journey? Why has the hype risen? Well, as I said, much of this is through lower cost. We've had rate arbitrage, you know, lower costs offshore, which have driven some value to us. We've perhaps used outsourcing to consolidate groups or eliminate redundancies, uh, used it as a catalyst to make changes that, that we've been looking to do in our organizational structure. We've achieved budgeted targets, and the CIO is a hero, and it's always a good thing for the CIO to be a hero. But then what happens in the journey? We've had this decline in hype that's taken place, as well as the perception that value has decreased as well. So why is that? What's happened here? Well, perhaps you're feeling a bit disillusioned. The coordination of teams and communication is more of a challenge than you thought. The cost to coordinate the outsourcing is higher than expected. Your business is evolving at a really fast pace and you have a strong need to, to really focus on, on a, a faster paced technology environment. You need support for transformational related activities and you're just not clear whether you're getting the long term value from your relationship. So what I want to talk about now is how you can get back on the upswing of both the hype curve and the value curve. What are some of the things that you can do as a customer and in working in conjunction with your vendor to make sure that you're going to get the right value and increase the hype. So the first thing you can do is refocus on your outsourcing goals. Refocus on why you're outsourcing. And there are three primary benefits that come from outsourcing. The first is efficiency. These are cost savings, cost control, those types of things. The second is enhancement opportunities. Uh, this is process improvements that will allow you to uh, increase quality, for example. And then there's transformational benefits. This is, this is making fundamental changes in the way that you do business that can help you to increase revenue growth, 
engage in new markets or new geographies, or perhaps invest in research and development and test the waters for new technologies. Now, to ensure that your sourcing activities are aligned to the achievement of these goals, it's important to ask some fundamental questions. For example, do your contracts with vendors align themselves to the achievement of these goals? And do you have a governance process that's enabling the review of these achievements of these goals and, and look, doing that on an ongoing basis? And are you, you and your vendors tracking things like SLOs and SLAs and various metrics to ensure that they're aligned to achieving the goals and objectives that you set forth? And are you periodically revisiting these goals to ensure that they're still relevant to your environment? And lastly, do you communicate with your vendor as a partner your strategic plan so that they know what areas they need to invest in so that they can provide the additional value that you're looking for. So I'd like to drill down into those three areas of value that you achieve from outsourcing in some, in some greater detail. In talking about efficiency and cost savings, rate arbitrage is, is obvious. We've had the, the, the lower costs associated with the offshore resources, but we all know that rate arbitrage is a declining value. The inflation rate in places like India is significantly higher than in other locations, so the value of rate arbitrage is declining. So some of the things that you'd like to do or should do is look at your cost of living adjustments that are built into your contracts and ensure that they're reasonably structured considering the current economic trends. In some cases, and I, I do agree with Richard that you know, uh, competitively bidding in the RFP process can be overdone, but where it's appropriate, Look at RFPs. Make sure that you have the right cost structure in place for specific types of work. And you need to ensure that you're asking your vendors to invest in having resources in locations that are of value to you, whether it be onshore resources, nearshore resources, etc., or emerging markets for that matter. It's important to ask your vendors to make sure that they're investing in those areas. It's also important to look at the scalability value that you can get from outsourcing. Is there an ease of ramp up and ramp down associated with projects working with the vendor? And do they have a pool of shadow resources that, that are generally non-billable, by the way, that are available to facilitate that ease of ramp up for, for projects and whatnot? Do you have SLAs or penalties associated with attrition in critical condition, uh, positions? So if you've identified with your vendor key resources that you feel are critical to the engagement, it's important that you let that vendor know that these resources are, are essential and that you have the right SLAs associated with any potential attrition that you have with those critical resources. And you need to also ask yourself and ask your, your vendor partner, are they addressing some of the visa challenges that many of us have been experiencing? In the United States, we have a much tighter immigration policy than we've had in the past under this, the current administration. So it's truly essential that your, your vendor partner is looking at this challenge. And it's more than just having offshore resources located onshore or having those resources come onshore. In fact, I think many of us have seen that the environment is different and people, for example, from India are less willing to come to the United States for long-term engagements. So getting back to that theme of asking your vendor partner to ensure that they have the right resources located in geographies that are important to you is an important consideration. And lastly, on, on looking at ways of going back on the upswing and you know, focusing on the efficiency and cost side, it's important to look at whether you're actually redirecting internal resources appropriately to more strategic initiatives and things that are gonna be of value to your organization. So moving on to the second uh, value from outsourcing, the enhancement of processes, you need to be asking your vendors to ensure that they're leveraging the centers of excellence that they have that is built from relationships with many customers in many industries and many technologies and leverage tools and processes that were developed and invested to develop these relationships within your particular engagements. There's so many situations where you can leverage these skills and, and centers of excellence more appropriately than perhaps you have been in a sense of partnership. So I encourage you to do that as part of this review of enhancement opportunities. And it's also essential that you've clearly established an expectation for added value. And what we're talking about here are things like, I'll tell you what we do at Pearson. We have monthly summaries of the value add by uh, vendor uh, staff. 
These are specific things that they have identified as opportunities for improvement that we track on a monthly basis. And you know, one of the things that, that ACL has done, and Vineet talked about it uh, earlier today, was the value portal, which, which is uh, displayed on the screen. And this value portal was created by HCL so that their employees can track opportunities to find improvements for their customers and actually also provide the customer an opportunity to accept the change and also agree what financial value that it will produce. And in some cases, HCL employees are actually being rewarded uh, or, or measured on their ability to provide additional value to the customer. So we're talking about going beyond the contract and really driving continuous improvement. And I think that's what all of us want from a customer, or excuse me, from a vendor. But it's essential that you build an environment to do that. The third area of value from outsourcing is the transformation, fundamental changes in the way that you do business. And you need to ask yourself, are you looking to your vendor partner to help you explore new markets, to deliver product faster, to have resources in emerging geographies? And also, from the standpoint of new technologies, are you truly leveraging the experience of a global IT partner to do research and development in bleeding edge technologies? Individually, very few companies that are in this room, represented in this room, have the wherewithal that a global IT partner has to invest in research and development. So it's truly essential that you take advantage of those opportunities. And the last point here is to really focus on communicating your strategic goals and objectives to your vendor partner, setting the expectations for where you want research and development, seeking specific opportunities to co-invest in some of these areas, and moving toward a valued partner relationship rather than a traditional service model delivery. I mean, you really need to focus on being a partner with your vendor and engage through open communication and sharing your strategic plan. If you do that, you're going to get the right level of value from a vendor. So we've talked about why you have an increase in the curve, why there's a decrease, and some things to get it back on the upswing. These are some things to ensure that you stay on a positive track. And one is to ensure that you have an appropriate governance structure in place. And if you haven't done so already, I strongly encourage you to establish a technology sourcing function. Now understand that this isn't a purchasing activity, it's not a procurement activity, it's not buying widgets. This is a skill set that requires a strong understanding of project management and communication skills. It requires expertise in contract development and uh, negotiations, process management and improvement skills, Six Sigma type skills to drill into if there's a process problem, what's driving the process. If there's an issue with performance, what's driving that? Because oftentimes it's on both sides of the equation, the vendor side and the customer side. So you need to have that kind of skill set in a technology sourcing group. And of course, you need a, some level of technology savvy and understanding of the system development life cycle, infrastructure, and things of that nature. From the standpoint of a governance structure, you need a technology sourcing group that's going to help drive effective governance. So I put up a pretty standard governance model, the pyramid, where the base is operational governance. This is the day-to-day -day operations between the vendor and the customer technologist who should be working as a seamless team. You need to have your, your sourcing group make sure that this is happening. The next level up in the pyramid is the tactical level. This is where you're looking at multiple individual engagements with a vendor and looking at the health of those engagements. Are they meeting their targets? Are there issues? If there are issues, are there remediation plans? So it's leveraging the knowledge and understanding across multiple engagements and ensuring that you're getting a drive towards continuous improvement in the overall relationship. And the top level of the pyramid is your strategic level. And this is where you get senior managers from both the customer side and the vendor side to share the strategic goals and objectives of the customer and to provide the vendor the opportunity to provide suggestions on how they can help you as a customer achieve those goals. It's also essential that you have the right kind of feedback on the performance of the, excuse me, of the vendor. So this includes things like customer satisfaction surveys and vendor scorecards. Both are things that we do at Pearson. We have these, these customer satisfaction surveys and vendor scorecards that monitor and, and look at performance. We do something a little bit unique in that we also have the vendors comment on Pearson. 
as part of the vendor scorecards so that we can look to understand where there might be some disconnects and ensure that we're resolving those types of issues. You also have to look at having the right operational level metrics associated with your governance structure. So this includes, you know, mutually agree things like defects per line of code, uh, schedule variances, mean time to repair, severity one issues, etc. But equally important is to have business metrics also part of your governance structure. And these are things like how long it takes to fill an open position, attrition, innovation ideas that have been suggested and innovation ideas that have been realized and actually implemented. So those business metrics are very important to, to monitoring a relationship. You also need to revisit your contracts periodically to ensure that they're focused on achieving the goals that you'd like to achieve in your current environment and they're not stale. And it's also important to update your sourcing strategy to ensure that in key areas of need you've got the right structures in place and that periodically you're looking at things like vendor capabilities in specific emerging areas, per perhaps revise your request for information to gather that information, and then also revise your approach to how you award work. And it could be that you single source. It could be that you have a small list of preferred vendors that you work with. It could be that you work based on centers of excellence, best in class type situations and award work to specific vendors. Whatever your methodology is, my suggestion is that you review it periodically to ensure it's still current. And lastly, and, and perhaps most importantly, to stay on the positive track in your outsourcing relationships and your vendor relationships, ensure you have an environment of open communication. If a vendor, if you want your vendor to provide value over and above rate arbitrage and over and above the standard agreements that you have with them, you have to clearly communicate that expectation. Success is a mutual benefit. Make your vendors partners by sharing your strategic plan and soliciting their help and advice in how you can achieve that, that strategic plan. And I'll leave you with this final note. A global IT sourcing partner has the experience across multiple customers, multiple industries, multiple technologies to truly drive significant value to you as a customer, but only if you make it clear to them and you make it part of the deal. Thank you very much.